Okay, well, I've soaked her tail for about 10 minutes. Uh, basically, I just held it right it under water. Rather than subjecting to put her in an entire container of water, because that is stressful. And we have some caudal area. We do have some scales, some skin trapped around the cloaca still, um, which is a bit tricky to get off. But I'll show you the easy part first. Uh, back to our damp towel. And uh, just very slowly work your way down. Actually, it, it isn't right now because it's trapped under the cloaca. There, that should help. Subcaudal scales can be tricky because the uh, the skin actually goes under back under the previous scale a little bit. Um, so those can be rather tricky. There we go. Now why is this important, um, you know, if it has one or two, uh, just a tiny piece even on the tip, well if you don't get that shut off a lot of times it's not going to come off the second time or the third time or the fourth time and then she'll get this really huge massive lump of dead skin on her tail. And over time, because, you know, they grow when they shed, uh, that will constrict the area. And eventually it's going to rot away and she's going to be left with like a piece of bone sticking out or a lump or gangrenous infection or something. Uh, that's why this is important. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this yourself, um... Take her to a, a reptile veterinarian who knows what he's doing, and he'll be happy to do it for you. It's probably best if you soak her on the way to the, to the clinic. Um, anyhow, her shed's all off her tail now. Now we have to work on the subcaudal area, which is a little bit trickier. And for this, it's often best if, I find it, if you just work backwards very slowly. also helps if you stretch the skin slightly, just gently, you know, pull on it so the scales sort of separate, much after like they've eaten a big meal, that helps a lot. And I'll probably have to get some tweezers. Oh, just a bit of warning. Soaking your snake may cause them to have a bowel movement. Um, she might have a bowel movement actually on my hand. But it's a risk I'm willing to take because I love my snakes. And I'll probably have to get the tweezers to get those off. And yeah, it's probably boring watching me pick this thing. But she's not fighting me at all. She's uh, pretty placid about it. 
Um, if you had something really tight around your anus, you'd probably want it off too. Uh, this isn't the best area that snakes like to be picked at. But uh, as you can see, they kind of get hypnotized by it. They become very placid. Placid by me uh, removing the, the skin in a gentle manner, not by me messing with the area. And it seems to be the culprit that uh, she has a few retained scales down here, maybe like two or three sheds. Um, if you remove a shed and you notice it's really opaque and yellow, it's probably a few sheds that are stuck on there together. Which would give me reason to believe why I'm having such a difficult time with this area because she's uh, retained quite a few sheds down here. Yeah, that's her, uh, her anal sacs. Poor girl. I haven't had her for very long, so uh, she's had quite a few scales built up around her anal sacs. Um, and of course, as I'm bringing out the scales, you can you can smell them. Just gentle, and I'm probably gonna soak her again one more time because I don't want to hurt us. A very very sensitive area right there. There's two tiny scales left, so I'm going to be back with the tweezers, remove them, and then she should be ready to go because there's just, it's just, snakes can I get, if they have an abscess anal gland, when they shed, you'll see this big old lump by their cloaca, shed wise, you'll see a skin, and then where the cloaca was, you'll see this big lump, and that's an indicator that they do have abscessed anal glands. Um, Snakes have anal glands. When you often catch a wild snake or you handle a captive snake that's not so tame, uh, they will defecate you, they will squirt their anal glands on you or quote unquote musk you, and that's their anal glands. And they can get abscessed just like a cat or dog. So I'll be right back. I just have to pick those two little scales off that go up into her anal glands. And then she'll be all set. And she has nice new skin. And like I said, I haven't had her very long, and she, I get her at Pile Show, but she came from a pet shop in Arizona. She had a number of problems. She was severely constipated for one. She had mites, too, and now I realize that she had some uh, retained uh, sheds down by her anal glands, which she should feel a lot better. Now I can see her spurs. Before, I really couldn't see her spurs, but now I can. Tiny, tiny, tiny little spurs, because she's a girl. So I'll be right back. Okay, well, you didn't want to see that. It was very boring. It was just me up close picking with a uh, small pair of tweezers. But skin's all out of her, her anal sacs, and uh, I'm sure she feels much better by that. Like 20 times better. Um, because now she doesn't have something constricting her butt. Um, but she's. She's all good. She's not fighting me too much. And like I said, she hasn't really been handled all of her life. Um, and she's calmed me down nicely. And she looks very beautiful today. She says thanks. <laughs>